Hi guys, Erica here from Joyful Oven. Today I want to share with you guys a simple recipe for some tasty, delicious doubles. I start by preparing the chana or chickpeas. 400 grams washed and soaked overnight in 4 cups of water and half teaspoon of baking powder. After soaking, you can pre-cook your chana in a pressure cooker by boiling on the stove, but my preferred method is in a slow cooker with 2 teaspoons of curry powder 1 tablespoon of salt, half teaspoon of baking soda, green seasoning to taste, and 4 cups of water. I'm also going to add 3 cloves of crushed garlic. For some extra flavor, you can add in half cup of split peas or dal. In the slow cooker, this takes 4 hours on high to give you that perfectly soft chana. Now I get started on the dough for the barrel. I have sifted 1 and a third cups of flour, and I'll add half teaspoon each of baking powder, yeast, and salt, together with one teaspoon of brown sugar. I'm going to mix this together well, and then I'm going to add half cup of warm water. Now your dough is going to be very soft and sticky, and that way you're going to end up with a soft, spongy barra. If your dough has too much flour, you can add a couple drops of water extra and continue kneading. The dough comes together in about a minute and you can see how nice and soft the dough is. Adding some extra oil into my hands, I'm going to bring my dough together now. And with a final coating of oil on the surface of the dough, I will set it aside in a warm place for at least 20 minutes before frying. After 20 minutes and with my oil already heating, I'm going to turn my dough onto an oiled surface and divide into 12 even pieces. This is going to give you six servings. The barra needs to be very thin, and so I'm using oil on the surface and my hands to stretch as thinly as I can. And then I'm placing this into the hot oil and flash frying for three seconds on each side. So again, it's important to get your barra as thinly as you can to get the best outcome. And your oil needs to be very hot so that when you place the barra in, it cooks in three seconds on each side. If the barra is not cooking, maybe you need to let your oil heat a little bit more before you continue frying. And this is my stack of barra all fried. And you can see just how nice and soft and spongy they are. They are going to be perfect in the doubles. Immediately after frying, it's important that you wrap your barra tightly into wax paper and then a clean kitchen towel and this keeps your barra nice and soft. And now we get ready to cook the chana. So into my pot, I'm going to add 2 cups of pre-cooked chana, 2 cups of water. I'm also going to add 2 cloves of garlic grated and some chopped bandana, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, quarter teaspoon of baking powder, one and a half teaspoons of ground jeera, half teaspoon of curry powder, and some ground turmeric. Lastly, I'm going to add in a half teaspoon of salt. You can add more or less to taste. And I will leave this simmering for 15 to 20 minutes on a nice low heat. After just 15 minutes, my chana is beginning to come together. It smells so good. I wish you guys could smell this. I like my chana a little bit on the thicker side. And so I'm going to mash some of the grains of chana into the sauce. And I'm finally ready to enjoy some tasty, delicious doubles. I am so excited, this smells so good. I'm going to make my first doubles now, adding two barra, top that off with some of this delicious chana, and finally, some shadabani sauce, which I will leave the recipe in the description. This is so good, you can see how soft that barra is. You guys need to try this recipe. Now guys, please don't judge me for this next spot. I'm home and I've decided as I'm making doubles, why not try some chicken doubles? And so I've curried some chicken with some jiro, and I'm going to add this on top of the doubles. Guys, it tasted so, so good. It was delicious. It was savory. This is something that you guys definitely need to try at least once, and you never know, you might love it. I do hope you guys enjoy this video. Let me know in the comments if you try this recipe and what you think. And be sure to like and subscribe to Erica's Joyful Oven on Facebook and YouTube for more amazing recipes.